Good morning, everyone. Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Christ, 50 days after Easter. This celebration marks the day when Christ breathed life in the apostles, just like God did to Adam and Eve. And as Christ breathed on them, they received the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we believe in the Holy Trinity. We often pray to the Father and the Son, and we often even hear about having relationships with them. But what about the Holy Spirit? Do we know the Holy Spirit? Do we have a relationship with him? Do we pray to him? Do we talk to him? He is no less than important than the other two, and yet he is often neglected. I would say largely because we don't always know much about him. So, who is the Holy Spirit? What does he do? It is the Holy Spirit that makes us into living temples. He strengthens us in our fight against temptation and against sin. He makes us holy through the sacraments. Through baptism, he makes us children of God and heirs to the kingdom. Through confirmation, he makes us temples of God, warriors, defenders of the faith. Through, conf through confession, he reconciles us to God by the forgiveness of sin. Through the Holy Eucharist, he gives us spiritual nourishment by changing simple bread and wine into the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through priesthood and matrimony, he makes the church holy. As a teacher, he clarifies and reminds us of Christ's teachings. He guides the magisterium, the church. He listens to our prayers. He enables us to pray. He speaks to us, especially through sacred scripture. And he gives us his gifts, fruits, and charisms, and thereby enriches the entire church. To help illustrate a little bit of what and how the Holy Spirit works on and in us, I want to share a story with you. Does anyone remember the 94, maybe it was the 92, World Olympics in Barcelona? I know it's a long time ago, but it's kind of a popular and famous one. Maybe you remember the runner, Derek Redmond. He's on his last lap of this race. It's about halfway through the track, and his hamstring gives out. It's torn, collapses mid-run, and he can't get back up, can't stand. And he starts struggling still to go to that finish line. Can only imagine the effort and the sacrifices he had made to get to that point in his life. I mean, to be an Olympic athlete is a huge deal. And to be able to get there takes quite a bit of effort. And so he didn't give up, even though his chances of even completing the race were pretty much non-existent at that point. And so his father was in the stands watching this. And upon seeing his son collapse and struggle to continue, he broke through the security line and ran to his son. And he picked up his son while he was crying, and together they finished the race. Together they finished the race. That father did for his son what the Holy Spirit does for us. When we are spiritually exhausted, the Holy Spirit encourages us and gives us the energy to keep going. When we find ourselves giving in to slavery of sin, the Holy Spirit leads us out. When we can't pray, the Holy Spirit prays for us. When we don't want to pray, the Holy Spirit pushes us. When we don't have the words to pray, the Holy Spirit tells us what to say. When there's no way we can finish the race, that is when the Holy Spirit picks us up and carries us to the finish line. And so the Holy Spirit is an important person, third person of the Trinity, but no less important than the other two. So how can we cooperate with the Spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit? How can we get to know him and rely on him and call him to our aid when we need help finishing that race? There's an old teaching of the church which speaks of the promptings of the Holy Spirit. It's like this little tiny voice that calls us to do what's good and just and right. 
So when you see a beggar on the side of the road and that voice, that voice that says, feed him, it's the voice of the Spirit. It's calling you, prompting you to do an act of charity. When it's the end of the day and you're tired and just want to lay down in bed and go to sleep, the Holy Spirit's calling you, prompting you, hey, pray anyways, it's okay. It's only an extra, like, two seconds. Just do it. When you're in a bad mood, your day isn't going right at all. Everything's just wrong about the day. The voice that says, it's okay. You'll be okay. This isn't the end of the world. It's the voice of the Spirit encouraging you, giving you that hope to keep going. And it's important that we listen to these promptings. When we first start listening to the voice of the Spirit, it can be very hard to hear. It's almost like a whisper. It's so quiet. But the more we listen to it and for it, and the more we follow through with what the Holy Spirit is asking us to do, the louder that voice becomes, the clearer it becomes, and the easier it becomes to follow. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is always with us. So it's important that we listen. He was sent by the Father and the Son to care for us, to encourage us, and to lead us. So listen and follow him until his voice becomes, just like in the first reading, a noise like a strong driving wind filling the entire house. Because if we listen and follow him, he will lead us directly to Jesus Christ.